Hi, Heroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time. It's your, if it's your first time joining us, I'm Kay, the Dungeon Dr Master for this fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons show. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Feels good, doesn't it? So it feels really good. Also a little silly. <laughs> very, very silly. And I hope that um, we'll have a good time tonight. Uh, but before we start, a quick note. Black Lives Matter. We decry the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, and too many more. Do something chaotic good for your community and join a march. Donate to a bail fund, write your representative, or just sit down and do some reading. We'll have some links in the video game description for things you can do to help, so please check them out. Oops. Now that we have that out of the way, let's... Uh, do some player introductions. And we have some new characters tonight. So Nick, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Nick. I play Easter Selberg, a uh, Archfey patron uh, warlock. Oh, it's me next, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, I'm Ethan, and I play Zofdal Zephyrax, a dragonborn wizard. Hi, I'm Zach, and I play Bonks, the barbarian bugbear <laughs> <laughs> so many bees I know. <laughs> yeah, basically. okay i'm melissa and i play angelica jacobson and angelica she's, <laughs> and she's a fearful druid fearful 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 yeah right. all right <laughs> so we premiere episodes every, on YouTube every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, tonight's adventure we is from the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mounts. Um, and we're actually beginning the start of a, a second ongoing campaign that we're going to play off and on whenever uh, there's a needed break in our main campaign, a.k.a. Whenever, whenever Ethan needs more time to plan things. <laughs> Uh, we'll be switching to this one and doing this one for a uh, short burst of time. Um, we don't have any character portraits on the uh, stat cards yet, but keep an eye out because they're coming. Uh, check the video description for links and information about all the stuff. And follow us on Twitter at Antiheroes Anon. For information about when we play, when we post, that kind of thing. Uh, and finally, enjoy the show. Share it with your friends. Come back to watch some more. Did I nail it? We good? good job, got it. Way to go. Got it. All right. right. <laughs> now, to dive into the episode. While the anti-heroes are preparing to leave Stygia and begin the final leg of their journey in the Nine Hells, we shift our focus now to another material plane world known as Exandria, where another group of misfits spent a night conversing over drinks, unaware that their own journey would begin the following day. We begin our adventure on the continent of Wildmount, far north in the graying wildlands. Nestled along the coast of the frigid depths lies Palebank Village, a humble fishing outpost of the Diarchy of Uthidur, and home to several hundred dwarves and elves. Snow gently falls from the sky, and wind bites your cheeks as you stand in the graveyard on this gray, wintry morning. The sun is low in the sky, sinking behind the fresh grave of Ergon Wenth, an old dwarf who caught a curse or a disease that turned him into an ice statue. The folk of the village have gathered to pay their final respects to Ergon's frozen remains. You are all there too. People are very sad. You can hear them. Yeah, I hear the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Wailing and weeping. His, his family, <sighs> friends. You are all there too. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about like, describe your character. Tell us what you're doing. Who, who wants to start? Let's start with Nick. Okay. Um, Easter is um, a human woman in her mid-20s who has a, 
Uh, tan skin, kind of, she's kind of short, especially compared to the rest of these giants. Uh, she's about <laughs> five and a half feet tall. Um, she's got a, a round face, wide nose, and, um, and very wide green eyes that are just taking in everything all the time. And uh, chestnut colored hair and a thick braid on her back. Uh, she's also wearing kind of outlandish compared to everybody else who's in like very, I feel like all, all the people of, of Pale Bank are like wearing very heavy cloaks and like um, stuff to keep out the biting wind. Um, probably a lot of furs and leathers and things. Easter's wearing some kind of weird like dragonfly scale clothing and a like moth wing cloak over that. Um, and she's just kind of like um, patting the dwarf Arl's shoulder as he like tears up a bit. Uh, standing next to Easter, uh, towering over her by comparison, but uh, dwarfed by the figures standing to their uh, other side uh, is a dragonborn figure um, with their body mostly covered by sort of a, a warm winter's cloak. Um, underneath it, you can see just kind of like a plain uh, button-up shirt. Um, their scales have kind of like a, a brass tint to them, uh, but they have these sort of almost uh, fish-like fins on the side of their face um, that have kind of a greenish tinge to the edges of them. Um, and they're holding onto a metal looking staff that has a uh, sort of a wireframe uh, 12 sided geometric shape at the top of the staff. Um, and they're looking sort of at these proceedings like they don't belong. Um, like they're trying to put on a smile, but also they know they need to uh, be showing some, some sorrow and some respect for the dead. Uh, they just feel like they don't really belong here very much, uh, a little bit fidgety. Um, yeah, and so that's that's Zof, kind of just looking around. Okay. Uh, so Bonks is probably off to the side a little bit, um, probably trying not to stand out too much. Uh, but it's kind of <laughs> hard because he is a hulking seven foot seven. Uh, bugbear with uh, basically dark, like really dark or black fur. Uh, he is wearing like some like tribal furs and stuff like that um, as well. Um, and let's see, he would be sort of, again, sort of off if he could to the side a little bit, but also he would be writing in his tattered journal because this seems like it could be a somewhat of a religious gathering, and he's very interested in what the proceedings might be and how these people worship the dead and how they um, go about this, if it's like some sort of ritual or some sort of, he, he's just like kind of curious about this, uh, but also trying to sort of not alarm anybody. Um, what about... Angelica. Yeah, what about you, Angelica? My other tall friend. <laughs> okay, so Angelica is, she's about seven feet, maybe a little taller, and she is uh, covered in fur. She's got short, kind of spiky hair. Um, her hair, her fur is kind of like a light blue denim color, and she's probably wearing a cloak because it's cold, and hidden in one of the pockets is a uh, She's brought a little companion, a little chipmunk. And she's just here. Um, the whole village has turned out for this uh, funeral, but she's really here to support her, her new friend, Easter. OK, thank you. So it looks like uh, for Bonks' benefit, the mm -hmm. uh, priests who are leading the uh, ceremony are priests of Moradin. Oh, I believe it's the all here. I'm going to have to look that up. Moradin? <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is right, the, what is. was the character's name that were, that's an ice sculpture now? 
Ergon. 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 Okay. U-R-G-O-N. Got it. Yeah. Yes. I... Morad in the old hammer. Can I roll like a religion check or anything to sure. try and glean information? Sure. Okay. The first check of our <laughs> the new campaign. Campaign, and I got a, 15. a religion check. A fifteen. Yeah, a the barbarian rolls a religion check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proficient. <laughs> I'm proficient. <laughs> this is the kind of crazy like characters that we're dealing with here. Um, yeah. So you know, Marat Marat Maradin is the mm -hmm. All Hammer. Um, worshipped by smiths and artisans and miners. Um, you know that, that he's a big deal in, uh, in Uthidurn and a lot of, uh, especially a lot of dwarven communities worship him. Okay. So the priests are dwarves, I'm guessing? Yes. Are, what's the demographic here now that the entire village is here? Is it like mostly human or mostly something else or it is mostly pause while i pull up the tab that has this information yes it's mostly dwarves okay here um there is a smaller percentage of elves it's like okay. two-thirds dwarves and one-third elves and then a smattering of other races namely gnomes thank you mm -hmm. all right yeah, so he, he he just kind of like trying to not be too you know conspicuous and just writing. Okay, and as the ceremony wraps up and um, you know people are are kind of filing up to say their own private personal goodbyes, uh, a gruff voice speaks softly from behind you. Thank you for attending Ergon's service. You turn and you meet the gaze of a weathered elf. Um, Easter would recognize him to be Elro Aldatar, who is the leader of Pale Paint Village. And he says, I'm sorry to speak of dark tidings under such circumstances, but I believe that Pale Paint Village might be in danger and I'm hoping you could help us. Is this to all of us or just to Easter? Yes. Mainly to Easter, but directed. He can see that you guys are together, so it's directed kind of to mm, the okay. group of you. Nobody told me that he became a an ice sculpture. I just heard he died. Well, we didn't want a panic to get around, you see, but it's true. Frozen solid, and we have no idea what caused it. It's terrible. Sorry, excuse me. Yes, oh, I'm, hello. I'm Zof Dahl Zephyrax. You can call me Zof, by the way. Zof, um, it's nice to meet you. We don't see many of your kind around here. No, yeah, I've noticed that, that as I come north. There's not many of us, but... Um, you, you, so, this guy, um, Ergon, you said? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I just, I only got into town yesterday. I don't really know anyone oh. here, but... Um, well, please, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Elro. Elro Adatar, Aldatar. I uh, nice to meet you. I I I'm the leader of the village, but that's mostly a title. Oh, uh, Zof kind of like looks down at their clothes, um, like brushes <laughs> a little bit of snow with their tail. Uh, I would have dressed he up a little more shakes. if I knew I'd be needing leadership. Um, he shakes Mike, his head. <laughs> I had a question. Um, this Ergon was an adventurer, right? Uh, did was he adventuring in in Isocross? I mean, that's what the barkeep was saying the other night. But yes, yes, he he had been exploring up in Isocross for about a year. So, it's a dangerous place, you know. Yeah, I gathered as much. But is this the sort of thing that often happens when people go up there? Because I was sort of hoping to book a ship up there myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's convenient. Well, I must say, Ergon has spent most of his life going back and forth to Isocross, and this is the first time I've seen anything like this. It would be worrying it's... if it was the second or third. <laughs> I mean, Hellbank Village is kind of known as a, a stopping point between here and there. Many adventurers have come and gone, but in the... 60 
years. Yes. <laughs> in the 60 years that I've been running this village, I've never seen anything like this. So, well, um, sorry, Easter. I, I, it's just, it kind of seems like, well, I mean, like, like he said, I, w I came here because this place is sort of a stepping stone, you know, to Isocross, and that's where I'm trying to head. Um, and, and, and then he mentioned, you mentioned there might be something you need us to, people to do up there. Well, I don't know, it just, it just feels like fate. I'm a big if, believer in fate. If I across is where you want to go, that can definitely be arranged, but you do look like able travelers and adventurers. And well, you see, you see, we thought that, that this, <laughs> did you hear Claire in the background? <laughs> I thought we were laughing. <laughs> We thought that this strange affliction was uh, something like an isolated incident, but uh, yesterday I noticed a similar sluggishness in a in a trapper that lives in town. Her name is Tolgi Luton. So he didn't come back this way. He it was a some sort of affliction when he returned. Yes, I, I apologize. Let me explain. It's been about two months since Erglon came back from Isle Cross. You remember that, don't you, Easter? Mm -hmm. That was about the same time that, yeah. that you came. He he came back, and for a few days, everything was normal. But then he came down with this strange affliction, something that made him lethargic and slow-moving. And blue veins appeared all over his body. Mm. Uh. The priests of both Maradin and Corellin used every spell they could muster to attempt to heal him, but nothing they tried worked. You said Corellin? Yes. C-O-R-E-L-L-O-N. Oh, I almost had it. Okay. <laughs> he battled the strange affliction for weeks. His body continued to slow until finally, he kind of looks over at the grave and sighs. His whole body turned to ice. I don't know much about healing people. Maybe, maybe you would be this would be your your department, Angelica. I've never heard of anything like that. Yes, neither have I. And you see, now that Tolgi has come down with the same affliction, we really need to find out what causes it, hmm. and hopefully, what can cure it. I tried to talk to Tolgi, but she told me to let her die in peace. Oh, that's sad. She doesn't Please. want to fight? She refuses to talk to me. Oh. You lot might have better luck convincing her to talk than I, or than any of my glass, my glass blades. They're better known for their combat skills than their ability to glean the truth in a complicated situation. Not to mention Tolkien is extremely distrustful of the authorities. Do you think it's um, contagious? And if it is? Is it wise for us to talk to her? Well, that's up to you. You can also go and check out Ergon's cabin. So if, if it's... Mm, Ergon's cabin might be a good place to start if you need to start investigating. If, I mean, if this is something you agree to do for me. And if you can find the cause, there's a hundred gold in it for you. Well, that'd buy a lot of supplies for going north. Sure would. Yeah. And a lot of surprise. kind of looks at their, their meagle, me I cannot talk today. Uh, their <laughs> meager it's house catching. of gold. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well. Box is like, what's a gold piece? <laughs> <laughs> you would know. I know. You I'm would kidding. know. <laughs> Probably never held hmm. them before, though. Yes, you have. You think so? I think it came from you, a pretty impoverished background, but... Yeah, but you've been traveling to different towns yeah. and stuff. You've dealt in gold. All right. Easter, have you ever been in his cabin before to clean it or anything? I, you know, not too long after he showed up, I went over there and I offered, but he just kind of grunted and turned me away. It's hmm. a good thing you didn't get sick. And Easter's like looking herself for, yeah, I hope I didn't. Well... <laughs> I wonder about how the disease has spread because 
Ergon was showing off his goods for the first few days he was here to a bunch of the young children in town, too. Oh. None of them seem to have caught anything. But you said someone else was is showing signs? Yes. Did she have to come in contact with him? I'm not sure. We might have to ask her. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you decide to go visit Ergon's cabin first, tell Mila that I sent you and she, she should let you write in without asking any questions. Who's Mila? She's the, the glass bay, bleh, 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 bleh. the glass blade guard that I set what that is a standing watch outside of Ergon's home. Glass who, blah. Who's the woman who came down with it? Her name is Tolgi. Tolgi. Is it Tolgi Lutan? Lutan. She's a trapper. She's she hasn't been in the village for very long. Hmm. A couple a few months at most. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, shall we have um a bit of lunch first before, so we can talk about this? I guess sure. so. I mean, I do need money for supplies and to charter a ship north. So, I mean, I'm okay helping out, but if you want to have some lunch to talk about it, we could go somewhere. Okay. Um, I kind of hate to break it to you guys, but we can't really go anywhere except for the Jolly Dwarf. They're sort of the only lunch in town. That's okay. No, that's fine. It was tasty enough. I've had mm -hmm. worse. Okay, sure. Let's go. Have good good luck. I'm not and exactly the best cook, and I've been traveling for a while cooking all my own meals, so <laughs> anything's better. Nice to meet you, and thank you for the information. Yes, please do not hesitate to come and ask me if there's anything you need. Okay. And thank you. And he goes back to, like, talk to some of the other villagers. Seven feet tall, uh, fear bulb. I know he'd have be a looking mighty, up at you guys. <laughs> have a mighty, mighty appetite. <laughs> I understand. Um, I I am curious about one thing, Kay. Um, sure. Is, is Nisrin in the crowd? Yes. Okay. Yes, she is. And she has been shooting very dirty looks at you throughout the whole service. Mm -hmm. And it's like accompanied by like, whispers to her companions okay yeah I'll, i think i'll i'll notice that and say let's let's uh, head back to the let's get that lunch why don't we <laughs> do any of us okay. notice that as well i mean roll a perception check all right how does a five get me yeah you have no idea <laughs> okay i'm too busy taking you don't notes. notice you don't notice anything that's fine Zoke actually has a decent passive perception Let's find out, just so I know. Yeah, it's 12. That's not bad. Oh, 14, actually. No, yeah, 12. then you... you... I lied. <laughs> what? I I'm going if... to read my character sheet on D&D Beyond here. <laughs> then, no, you don't notice either. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of There's a lot of people here. There's no reason for you to be looking at her. Yep. And Zof now has that idea of food in their head, so... <laughs> okay. All right. So you want to head to the Jolly Door? Yeah. As we walk back to the tavern, Zof is sort of absentmindedly listing ways to die that could be worse than being frozen into a uh, ice statue. Mm -hmm. You could be bitten in half by a wyvern. Uh, you could uh, be boiled in lava or in oil. And the list goes on. Quicksand would be pretty bad too. Quicksand would be awful because it would get all up in your lungs. Mm, up in your nose and ugh. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks. I mean, when you think about it, frozen into ice is not actually that bad of a way to go. <laughs> I wonder if it's... Really yeah, it wouldn't might, bother it me. It might be peaceful almost, depending on how it feels. I don't know, maybe just like that cold feeling sinking all over you. But it also happened over a long time. You wouldn't want to be suffering for that long. That's also true. But maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you start to go numb after a little while. I don't know. I just think I think there's probably worse ways to go. Probably. Wonder there toward the end, 
if he was really sluggish, how long it took him to get from place to place. He didn't leave his house much. No one really saw him. The bright side is, if we choose to investigate this and one of us catches whatever he came down with, we'll have a chance to find it out. <laughs> That's the bright side. <laughs> The wow. risk we're trying to, t uh, we might be yeah. taking then, I guess. I assume we're like having this discussion over food. Or while we're traveling, oh, yeah, sure. okay. while we're ordering yeah. food, yeah. 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 You can be in the tap room of the Jolly Dwarf, mm -hmm. which for our viewers is a cozy two story inn run by a retired adventurer whose name is Arl Bortok. And Arl is uh, very in a very somber mood as he gives you your food and drink. He's not really in the mood to talk. Okay. Understandable. Um, before you go away, Arl, can we have one more one more picture? I because we're gonna need a little bolstering for Aaron. We gotta run in a little bit. That is if Aye. we're all in agreement. I come in right up. Thank so, you. So, um, which errand are we talking about? Where are we going? Well, if we agreed to go to this uh, cabin. I would say that's an errand. Well, I mean, like, are we going to um, Tolgi's or to uh, Urbox? Well, Urgons. I think we... What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with a cabin? To see if we can find anything that might be helpful? Like something from his travels that might give us an idea? That might be a good place to start. Hmm. We might know better what we're looking for if we talk to uh, this other person and see how she how might interacted. have come down with it. Um, yeah. If she talks we to us, to well, cabin. okay. But well, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Find out what her relationship with um, with uh, Ergon was, how close they were. Okay. Either way is fine with me. Sounds like either way Drink is fine with a lot of us. <laughs> Drink some more <laughs> ale, get some more courage. <laughs> Would you say that drinking a lot of ale will bolster or hinder our immune systems? I'm not sure which one to do. Well, uh, alcohol. <laughs> Good answer. Is that an answer? <laughs> Good enough for me. <laughs> what, what doesn't kill you kills whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Love shrugs and takes another thing. Logic. <laughs> okay, should we flip a coin? That's good. Sure. Heads or tail or uh, heads will say go to the cabin. Tails will say um, go Tolgi. to talk to this. Yeah, Tolgi. Uh, heads will be even. Cabin will, or uh, tails will be odd. It is a natural 20, or even. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this idea. Uh, what did I say was even? Um, the cabin. Cabin. All right. Cabin it is. I think you see Bonks relax a little bit when we say in, the cabin. In my in my notes, both of them are cabins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm a little bit confused about myself. <laughs> Ergon's cabin where he lives, or Tolgi's yeah. cabin. Where well, I, I think it was Ergon's cabin, and then a person. It was Ergon's cabin or... versus to the Tol cabin of the person. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So we decided on the the cabin. Yeah, yeah. Ergon's yeah. cabin. Yes. Okay. Fate All right. says it, and so Easter let it knows be. the way. Yeah, Easter would have where it's at. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a more. very good vibe about this. I don't think I know where Tolgi lives, but I do know where Ergon lived. Okay. Okay. Ready. All right. All right. So you make your way across town um, to find a one-story log cabin at the edge of town. And there is a glass blade standing outside the front door, a uh, female wood elf. And she sees you coming and she says, Oh, hello. Hey, Mila. Good afternoon. Hi. You must be Mila. I'm Zophdal Zephyrax. You can call me Zoph. 
So, well, that's good because that's a mouthful of a name, ain't it? It's not really that bad once you get used to saying it. Zofdal Zephyrax, Zofdal Zephyrax, Zofdal Zephyrax. <laughs> I take your word for it. Zof is fine. <laughs> what can I do you for? Um, Elro uh, told us that we were going to be allowed to look inside. Oh, yes. He did mention that he was going to ask some adventurers to look into this thing. Such a sad business, isn't it? Well, you know, we were just having that conversation. There's actually a lot of worse ways you could go. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, imagine drowning in quicksand with all the sand in your lungs. Oh, well, that sounds terrible. Uh, slowly uh, dipped into a pot of boiling oil. Oh, my goodness. Bitten in half by a wyvern, still alive while it eats you. Okay, hey, Mila, <laughs> has anybody else been inside to look at the cabin since he passed? No, you're the first people I know of. Okay. I don't know what kind of accent that is. <laughs> it's a wood elf accent. <laughs> it's a yeah, wood elf obviously. Accent. That's what it is. It's flawless. That's what it is. Flawless. I don't I don't actually know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know. So so, not that I know of, but you, here. But, I hate to interrupt you, Zope, but we need a little <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, just a minute. And she like turns around and she's fumbling with the key and she unlocks it and she says, all right, go ahead. Don't cause any trouble in there or it'll be my job. All right, I'll go inside. Yeah, I'll hey. come along. All right, so you walk in and this dark, cramped cabin looks like it might have been a cozy place when its owner was alive, but now, an unmade bed stands near a cold fireplace, its mantle hung with the head of some snarling white beast with gray horns. On the other side of the room, a small table strewn with dirty dishes and set with a dwarf-sized chair stands before two empty shelves whose contents are scattered across the floor. Kitchen utensils, dried foodstuffs, adventuring gear, and a few books. Hold, hold on, it, it's a bit dark. Let me get that. And Zof kind of pulls the staff out and inside the um, wireframe 12-sided polyhedral shape, uh, a firefly appears, just sort of like appears into existence out of nowhere. Uh, and an orb of light that is sort of light blue streaks out across the room and lands on the chair, illuminating the entire cabin. Wow, that's really impressive. Um, I told you I'm a bit of a wizard. Easter a bit. produces a crystal and makes a light of her own. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zof looks dejected. Now, now you two get along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can see in the dark anyways. Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Do what you must. I want to take a look at these books that you mentioned that were on the floor. Sure. I'm going to look at the mantelpiece, the wolf or beast thing with horns. Okay. Okay, and I will just look at, um, see what else I can see. Uh, you said the contents of the shelves were all over the floor. I'll look for yeah. anything that might help. And I think I will go start like looking around, starting with the bed and going around the room, looking for anything that might be like hidden under mattresses or whatever. Um, behind, under floorboards, stuff like that, secret places. Okay, um, I need Easter, Angelica, and Zolf to make investigation checks. Vonks will get to you in a minute. Sure. Actually, we can start with you, Vonks. All right. Make a nature check. Nature check. Oh man, I'm so yeah. good at these. I rolled the first natural one of this session. Oh no! I rolled the second natural one of this session. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's a one. Zof did great. I was. Oh my god, you are not kidding me. Did you roll a one? I rolled a one. No the way. Arrow came to the right people. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I rolled a seventeen plus four for a twenty-one. All right, wow! Zof, my take gosh. it away. <laughs> All right. So. Uh... So uh, we'll start with Vox. Yeah, so I think he would go there and like maybe even try and after looking at it, maybe try and like lift it off and like 
get a better angle. Okay, as you go to lift it, uh, you prick your finger on one of the gray horns and you drop it on your foot. Great. And uh, you're too distracted by the pain to actually get a good look at the creature. Yeah, that's fine. Now I'm angry at it. <laughs> Flying to a rage. He, he bonked his <laughs> no, foot. No, no. He bonked, bonked his foot. Oh. Bonked, bonked his foot. <laughs> no. My foot got bonked. Um, Easter and Angelica, you were looking at the stuff on the floor from the bookshelf. And uh, Easter, there are a lot of uh, interesting books here. And you find yourself more curious about like you pick up this one book and you just like need to start reading it and reading it. <laughs> and so you just sit down and start reading this book and forget that you were looking for something. <laughs> uh, so Angelica. In, like the, the dwarf sized chair at this point, just kind of sitting in it. Yeah. Angelica, you find the uh, bag of adventuring equipment. Um, and you find some fur-lined clothing inside and you get excited because like, ooh, things. And you pick up the fur-lined clothes and it was wrapped around a hooded lantern, which you drop and shatter. And now there's glass and oil all over the floor. <laughs> uh, but Zof, um, you said you were looking kind of at the bed, like yeah, under the sheets the bed. and stuff. Yeah, going around the room, starting with the bed, just looking like under the mattress for like floorboards that seem like they might be able to be lifted, stuff like that. Okay, so as you kind of walk around, it's very clear to you right away that someone has recently been in here and trashed it. And as you're kind of checking the floorboards for creaks, you can see that there's a set of footprints kind of leading outside. Hey guys, it's totally normal if someone comes into your house after you're dead, right? <laughs> well, someone's got to clean the place up. Yeah. But I mean, that's your job, right? Is there any, are there any other cleaners in the village? No, it's pretty much just me. I kind of and invented the position. Plus, instead of cleaning, it looks like they trashed the place. That's the opposite. Yeah. opposite of a cleaner. Yeah, is that a job that exists? No, that's not, no. A dirty work? <laughs> no, there's no trashers. Well, there's been a trasher here, so. Uh, here, this way. <laughs> I, found, I found some tracks. You know, if there know. is a trasher, we should team up. Yeah, that would be lucrative, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Make money Anyways, on both this ends. Way? <laughs> win win. Win win. <laughs> all right. So you you all following the footprints? Sure. Okay. All right. So the footprints lead outside and through the snow. As we go outside, I just like tap Mila on the shoulder, like, you didn't notice these footprints? <laughs> She kind of blinks and she looks down. She goes, oh, I thought they were yours. No, we came from that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps they're mine. And she kind of compares her foot to, to the footprint. And she goes, no, they're not mine. They're much bigger than mine. Oh, dear. <laughs> She's kind of freaking out a little bit. Yeah. Mila, we're going to follow big, these footprints. Yeah. How big are they? Are they like bigger even than boxes? Um, no. Okay. No, they're, they're, <laughs> Mila's just, you know, a very slender wood elf. Okay. Yeah, Foot sense. size flex. Do they go back, <laughs> do they go back towards town or sort of away from town? That's a great question. Kind of back towards town. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess before we leave here, then, was there anything else you guys wanted to look at? I mean, well, I kind of no, want to go back to town, so. I sort of wanted to finish that book. <laughs> you want to just go grab it? He's dead. I mean, I don't think you'll mind. I feel just, bad. Just don't light anything in there because I dropped a lantern and there's like oil everywhere. Okay? Don't set it on fire. 
We might need to go back in. Okay. I'm sure they'll get someone to clean that up later. <laughs> might have to do that myself, actually. Oh, or you, you can know, my rates, are, my rates are really reasonable. <laughs> oh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Mr. Altatar did tell me about you. So are we the trashers? <laughs> <laughs> in a are you? The tallest, clumsiest people. She kind everything. of looks at Easter's feet. <laughs> Well, I just remember the scene from Avatar where Aang's like, you see, I have very large feet. <laughs> <laughs> and his feet are just tiny. I think compared to Kiyoshi's. Uh, such a great show. All right. So <laughs> Mila kind of says, okay, good luck. I'll uh, see about getting this cleaned up. Don't worry. And uh, you all follow the footprints. I wouldn't say they go back straight into the center part of the town, but like through the residential area. And uh, they lead to a snow covered cabin. Um, and it looks pretty peaceful and quiet from the outside, um, but the windows are all shuttered. And you can see that there is a steady stream of smoke piping out of the chimney. So you guess that there's probably a roaring fire within. Hmm, okay. Okay, I'll knock. Okay. Uh, you can hear a gruff voice inside saying, go away. I don't want me. Uh, knock, knock. I said go away. Um, t Togi, is that you? Who's asking? Uh, it's me, Easter, and some friends. I didn't care. Leave me alone. No, I, I mean, excuse me. Um, it, sorry, Zofdal Zephyrax. You can call me Zof. Um, <laughs> you see, we were hired by the leader of this this village, uh, Elro, El Elmo, El. El <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, um, did you say Elro? Yeah. He told me okay. that you. <laughs> he told us that you weren't feeling well, and I, I thought maybe if you weren't feeling well, maybe you might need somebody to help around the house. Why don't you make a uh, persuasion check or a deception check? Uh, Probably deception because you just lied to her door. True, true. Fortunately, I'm not proficient in either of those. Same. Also, I can perform a healing word, maybe help you feel better for a little bit. Uh, I rolled another one. <laughs> not even kidding. I rolled the second one. This is Great. the fourth. This is the fourth one that has been rolled in this campaign so far. Out of six. This, this out of this six rolls. Well. Yeah. This bodes well. Who were a hearty bunch. Uh, so adventures. you can hear her saying, I don't need no help cleaning. I don't need no help doing anything. I need you to go away. Wouldn't you like a little healing word? There's no response. Come on, even if it's for a little while, it'll make you feel better. We could cheer you up, maybe. We're, we're a funny group. You've never seen people like us in a, in a long time, I wager. Roll a persuasion check at disadvantage. Disadvantage? Because oh, well, you can't do worse than I did. Uh, uh. <laughs> I got a seven. Sorry, guys, I set us off on a bad foot. <laughs> Um, yeah, she just says, I say it one more time, go away. I wonder if there's any way we can, I'm, I'm like whispering to this, is there, is there any way you can sneak in there? I'm pretty sneaky. Let me review my spell book. Uh, short answer, no. Um, however, I could try something else, a different, different angle, different tact to try and get us in. I'm a... You know, I, I can be persuasive if I want to. 
Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Loud knock on the door. <laughs> Zoph like kind of takes a big breath and then just loud knock on the door. There's no answer. We know you're the trasher. <laughs> <laughs> we followed your tracks here from the cabin. Ergon's cabin. We know you were there. And Roll we can an intimidation can... check at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, despite what Zof said, they're not good at this. Uh, disadvantage? That's a 10. Oh. I, I can better. I can do um, with a plus I can do, zero. I can do guidance and you can roll another um, D4. What do you say, Kay? Retroactively, is it allowed? Well, this time I'll allow it, but in the future, you need to pass guidance before he makes the roll. Oh, I thought I'm getting it mixed up with the absorb. I mean, with the other one, with the healing yeah. word. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'll allow it this time because we're new to these characters, but uh, in the future going forward. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Add a big one to it. Oh, yeah. For 11. Yeah, that's not enough. I, I'm going to just, I'm going to try one more thing, one more way to persuade her. Um, oh, man. Easter, like, clears her throat and, like, meditates for a second, like, deep breath. And breathes out and activates uh, her fate presence. What does that do? Um, I can cause each creature in a 10 foot cube from you, and it doesn't say I have to see them, to make a wisdom saving dirt or become charmed or frightened by me till the end of my next turn. Also, Ethan rolled two ones when he just rolled. <laughs> what? So that, oh, that's, now, yeah. that's now what? <laughs> oh, because Seven the 11 is or... D1. Oh, because yeah. the D1. Yeah. But um, one of them was a 10, though, so... I mean, the D4. Not anymore. <laughs> Transformed. Yeah, I'm going to save you that the use of that ability, Nick, because she's not within 10 feet of the door. Oh, okay. All right, I got nothing. We could get her within 10 feet of the door. <laughs> I mean, and uh, how that works in-game, you can probably hear her stomping back to her bed yeah. in the back of the cabin. Yeah, okay. Well, we could go tell Elro that she's not cooperating. And that we know that she was visiting the cavern. We know she's the track. We don't know these are her tracks. Did we just there, know they you know, lead back to her cabin. I'm just going to say, if you look around at the cabin, there are four walls, and each wall has a window. And there's a chimney. I think we're being told something by the gods. <laughs> Again. Just saying. Um, well, Easter's the teeniest. <laughs> I'm proficient in stealth. <laughs> it's your big hairy guy. <laughs> hey, you know, don't yeah. don't judge a book by its cover. You can judge Turn those it. books and points back at the <laughs> cavern that I mean, you're so enthralled Bigfoot with. has still never been caught on camera, so <laughs> not his name. It might or might not be Bonks. <laughs> the <teeny cabin>. I'm <laughs> trying to picture. I'm trying to picture this. Okay, go for it. Yeah, it's like slither should in we, there. Should we go peek through a window? Sure. Yeah, so maybe we can do do a round uh, about the building and see what we can see. Only other thing I got is I can set a bonfire and she'd have to come out. But I don't want to trash our house. I don't want to be a trasher. You don't want to be trashers. I don't want to be a trasher. Not yet. We can get to arson if we need to, but we don't need to start there. I don't want to be a trasher. (laughs) So if you go around the house, um, you can see that each of the cabin's windows is shuttered and latched from the inside. But it looks like you could use these tools or some equivalent to try and get it open. Anyone have these tools? Um, no, but I've got an idea. <laughs> or a rock would work very well. <laughs> Breaking. I mean, she already knows you're out there. Yeah. I mean, do we want to stay on her good side? I feel like we're already on her bad side at this point. We're already on her bad side. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned with making her mad. I just don't want to burn down her house. 
So if we want, let's see. Oh. You know, you might as well open the door. We're talking about like breaking in. You might as well just let us in. <laughs> um, yeah, no response. <laughs> Fine, it's on you then. <laughs> Nature loving, you know, friendly. Why don't you roll a <laughs> intimidation check at disadvantage? Just giving her a warning, a heads up, not a threat. It is what it is. You are threatening to break into her house. Okay, disadvantage. So it's this one. Intimidation, you say? Yep. 15. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> you can cast guidance right. on yourself. You can hear foot, foot stomps, like very heavy footfalls. Foot and stomps. the latches of the door are being unlatched from the inside. And it bangs open. Oh, now you can do your thing. <laughs> well, hold on. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, so the minute the door is open, the heat of the small cabin hits you like a hammer blow. You can see over her shoulder, there's a table set with neatly stacked dishes and tools and utensils in the center of the room. And you can smell simmering soup coming from a pot hanging inside the roaring fireplace. There's another fire burning in an iron brazier at the opposite end of the room, which is filling the cabin with a smoky haze. Tulgi stands before you in the doorway, wrapped head to toe in blankets, shivering. And you can see bulging blue veins streaking her face and her neck and her hands. And she does not look happy. Yeah. And she says, all right, what do you want? Oh, I'm so sorry to see that you're not feeling well. Why didn't you shut it? Enough with the caring act. I know that's not why you're here. We are here to try to help. Can't you just answer a few questions, please? What do you want to know? Easter, you know her better. Um, we have, have you been to... Uh, how can I Ergon? this dude? Ergon, thank you. Have you been to Ergon's cabin? Who wants to know? Well, we found tracks from there to here, so either there were you or you have a visitor that you don't know about. Can you roll either an intimidation or a persuasion check? Your choice. Okay. Please let me roll something inside of one. Just, just a two would be nice. <laughs> oh, that's way better. Uh, 22. Dang. Okay. All right. She looks at you and she looks at the others and she sighs and she says, all right, come in. It's cold out there. And she kind of steps aside and like kind of hobbles back to her bed, kind of assuming that you're going to follow her. Yeah, I'll follow yeah, her. Yeah, I would follow she kind of takes her seat back on her bed and tightens the blankets around herself. And she says, I, it was me who searched Oregon's cabin. I knew I, it. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he had the other secrets or magic even hiding away there. Well, did you find any? No. Inside, Inside check. check. <laughs> oh, I got a 14. Out of one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find her stat card. Insight's one I'm good at too. Why? <laughs> and and oh, how man. long ago was this? That's also a good question. Hold on. It had to be hey, pretty it's my fresh. first roll. Oh God. Roll. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was not very good at all. So uh, she is telling the truth, but she's hiding something else. I 
So I think I would speak up and say, well, you did a pretty aggressive search. Certainly you found something. No, there was nothing to be found there. And I, believe me, I tried. I was looking for anything that could help me get rid of this stupid illness, or whatever you call it. How long ago did you look? How long ago did she look? It was not, it wasn't that long ago. A few days, maybe. I mean, well, that makes sense if you had the illness and went there looking for an answer. That checks out. It was out. after he died, that's for sure. Mm. Okay. So, how, how long have you been feeling poorly? Uh, here's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just a few days, I think. A week at best. Okay. And did uh, Ergon talk about you know, coming in contact with people that he's never dealt with before on his travels? I didn't can what or go knows. I haven't so spoken you, to him since he came back at all. So you don't have any regular interaction with Ergon? No. Why would I? Huh. Yeah. What is it you Let's do here in the village? <clears throat> She sighs. My sister, Hulu, and I, we, we came to Pale Bank Village a few years back from Shady Creek Run. We both work for the Utalak family. They sent us and a few others mind here to keep eyes on treasures coming back from Isel Cross. Of course, we were meant to steal them. You know, when artifacts come through here, they're often the unusual goods that treasure hunters are trying to keep away from Uthador or the Duendelian Empire. Urgon came back with those treasures two months ago, you know? I saw my chance. And I waited for him to sell off his goods to help curiosities, and then I broke in and I took them for myself. That's Jeez. the only interaction I've had with Urgon. Do you still have them? Yeah, have you sold them? No, but I gave them to my sister. Most of them, uh, anyway. I did keep this, and she takes out, under her shirt, she has this ornate blade in a gilded sheath. She takes it out and kind of shows you. Are there any sort of markings on it or anything like that? Why don't you make, let me check what kind of check it is. It is a, either an arcana or a history check. Oh, oh, we're going to go arcana. <laughs> it's slightly better. Oh, yeah, 19. There it yeah. is. All right. Um, we're getting you, better at this. <laughs> she'll hand it to you if you want to look at it. Yeah. And you look so it a little bit of interest and kind of like. You look around at it and a uh. little bit, and after some, after some close inspection, you can tell that it is a relic of the fallen flying city of Aeor. Of what? Aeor. Aeor. Mm -hmm. Aeor. Well, this looks incredibly old, um, and if it came from Isilcross, I'd be willing to bet that it's a relic of the flying fallen city, the fallen flying... Yeah, you know, the city of Aeor. Oh, what? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried that, that you touched it there. So I'm kind of worried. Oh, this might have been contaminated. Uh, um, Easter. Um, Zof is kind of like paralyzed now. Just Easter <laughs> con con conjures forth. Make a, a constitution uh, saving throw. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> conjures forth a, a spectral hand, and the hand takes it from Zof and says, Here, let me. <laughs> Nice trick. I can do that too. <laughs> it's not so special. Yeah. And Easter looks at him a little bit, then why didn't you? Yeah, be, be more careful. <laughs> I was too excited. <laughs> um, so where does your sister live? 
Well, she lives in town here with me usually, but since we stole the, since I broke into Puck's curiosities, she, uh, she's been keeping all of the stuff up in Croker Cave. Croker Cave. I gotta make, gotta make sure she's okay. Yeah. Have you been in contact with her? Well, she sent me a letter just the other day. I was meant to go and meet her there, but I can barely get out of bed, as you can tell. Okay, well, we're going to do our best to find out what's going on, and hopefully we can make you better. When, when did you give your sister the relics? Or the, the, the things that, you've, that you got? How many days or how, how, how much time has passed? Let me check. Oh. Well, it's been about two months now, I think. Give or take. So, I mean, if it's something <laughs> that you guys found off of Ergon, then it's possible that she has the same affliction that you do right now. If one of I these items care. is cursed or something. And if... If she doesn't say is, nothing to me about it. If your sister isn't cursed, then that rules out most of it. I mean, I think she, like, Easter holds up the little thing in her range, and I think we can narrow it down to this bad boy here. Uh oh, Zof. Would you like us to go check on her for you? If you have the mind to do so, I'm not going to stop you. Can you is give us directions sister... to this cave? I. Is your sister much like you? <laughs> Why do you want to know? Because if she is, would you mind giving us some sort of letter of introduction? <laughs> because we had a lot of trouble getting you to let us in the door. Yeah. She, why don't you roll a persuasion check? <laughs> Great. This will go well. Listen, now would be the time to use guidance. Yep, guidance. Okay, and the extra d4. 16. Hey. She grumbles and she points to the, the table and she says, give me a pen and some paper and I'll write you something. Oh, I've got those things. I think. She holds out her hand. Mm, yep, I've got an ink pen here kind of rustling around in a bag. And I have a single piece of parchment, actually. So here we <laughs> go. That's it. <laughs> Easter, did you take the book or did you leave it behind? Just curious. Uh, I think I left it behind. Hmm. Okay. What do I call you? Oh, me? Oh, yeah, for my sister. Zofdal Zephyrax. You can call me Zof. I think I will, eh? Yep, sounds fine. <laughs> it's lovely how that rolls off his tongue. <laughs> Not well, like Ninja um, Wika. <laughs> Never gonna live that one down. Okay. So she like scribbles a note down. I assume everyone else introduces themselves yeah. to her. Sure. So she yeah. can write their, your yeah, names yeah. in the note. And she like stuffs it or she like rolls it up and ties like a string around it and then uh puts a wax seal on it and hands it back to you. And she says, that ought to do the trick, eh? Eh? Am I moving to Canada now? <laughs> I don't know what this <laughs> accent is. <laughs> oh. Okay. Don't worry, Tolgi. If, if it takes as long for you to die as it took Ergon, you still have quite a, few, a while left. We'll lick this before then. I hope you're right about that. Because I'm trusting you with this one. Now get out of my cabin and leave me in peace. All right. Sounds good. All right. Okay. And just listen, before we go, just keep in mind, there's lots of worse ways to go than freezing <laughs> to death. But we're going to try and keep you from doing that. I can't think of any right now, but I'll well, keep that could. in mind. <laughs> As Zof starts to launch, I'll like, I'll like, yeah, I'll, I'll just check. Come along. 
<laughs> um, I've written down letter of introduction from Folgi in my inventory. Yeah. Easter, Easter um, folds up the blade in her one piece of parchment and tucks it away in her stuff. Yeah, Tolki sees you do that. She's a little bit annoyed that you're taking her dagger, but she doesn't say anything about it. Oh, you took the um, the relic weapon thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, also, I do want to point out that because Easter has been here for a while, um, you knew that Pelt's curiosities had been broken into. Um, and you recognize the name of Pelt's Curiosities. And then uh, I think, Angelica, you would recognize the name of Pelt's Curiosities as well as being an antique shop in the city, but it has been closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wanted to shop so there. So you haven't now had a chance to the... shop there yet. Yeah, now I know the reason why I can go in there. <sighs> Imagine that in this small, small, it's not even a city. Well, you don't know that. Small. Well, it's called <laughs> Fairbank Village, so yeah. it's more of a village, really. I think, yeah, I think she'd know the difference between a city and a village. So, so um, if you want to go to the cave, uh, it's pretty easy to, to I mean, Tony <laughs> told you how to get there, or if you want to visit Pelt's Curiosities. Do you want to, to find swing some more information too? That's fine. Do you want to swing by Pelks before we head out to the cave? I think I'd rather go to the cave first. Kind yeah, of seems like any relevant evidence would have been has... transported to the cave. Yeah, that's what I feel like too. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry, no shopping right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I know I, I know. I promised you we'd go today, but might have. Wait, to take Easter, a didn't you have a house to clean? Oh yeah. Hang on. Can we swing by there real quick? <laughs> yeah. I thought sure. you said you didn't have to be there. I, I have to go there. I don't have to be there the whole time. Oh. I, I suppose. I mean. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go to the house Easter has to clean. <laughs> and I'm hearing about now for the first time. Yeah. No, I mentioned this before. Like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what we do to DMs. Okay, you know this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But I'm, I'm knocking the door. Hello, hello. Whose house is this? <laughs> God, I don't know. Um, is that the answer at the door? Just, Whose house it's is just this? Somebody's house. It's. I don't have a name. Do you have? No, name? I just no. I can I can make up an NPC if it's somebody. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like it's, like it's uh, no like it's nobody we've Nisrin. talked to. No, no, it's, yeah, she would not hire Easter to clean her house. Okay. All right, then. Uh, you know what? Let's make it easy. There's no answer. No one's home. The okay. windows are dark. There's no well, smoke coming say? out of the chimney. Do we break in? Do we resort to arson? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Let me check one thing. Do we trash it first so that you can clean it and get double play? Look, double I'm play. already not double well play. liked in the world. Is, is, there, is, there, a, is there a window? <laughs> Sure, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, Easter goes over to the window um, and starts casting a spell um, and peers inside after she finishes and sees that um, it's being cleaned up in there and says, okay, we're good. We can go. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bonks, pretty neat trick. Bonks, out of curiosity, will also pretty look in the window. Neat trick. <laughs> pretty neat trick, yeah. What is What, what oh, kind of spell it. does he see? <laughs> Um, you see, like, um, dishes washing themselves, and, like, once that's done, like, laundry starts to fold itself um, and things like that. It looks like it looks like an invisible person is in there doing all the stuff that Easter is supposed to be doing. And so I guess he'll be like, wow, you weren't kidding. You really don't have to be in there. Yeah, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> the justice turns king, and then the well. justice... It's kind of like, it's kinda like my secret. I don't think they pay pay me as much if they knew I wasn't really doing much. Mm. I won't tell anyone. Thank you. Anyway, let's go. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Croker Cave. Croker Cave is. Sorry, I'm pulling up my notes on Croker Cave. Uh. 
Its entrance is on the shores of the frigid depths due north of Hilding Village. So it takes you maybe an hour or so to get there on foot from the village. Um, and as you kind of draw closer to the cave entrance, you can see these uh, frequent signs of tracks where people have been coming and going out of the cave, but you don't see any patrols or guards here. Um, you can see a plume of smoke rising from the ground beyond the cave entrance, venting through a narrow, na narrow natural chimney. Um, it looks too small to be climbed, however, and it's pretty clear that the main cave entrance is the only way to get inside. You also know from talking to Tolgi that it is uh, known, uh, it gets its name from its resident giant ice frogs and that residents of Pilbank Village tend to avoid the area because of this. Could be worse than giant ice frogs. <laughs> Could be giant ice lions, giant ice bears. Or just ice giants. What about just giant ice? <laughs> that might not be too bad, though. Uh, anyway, by giant ice. Uh, Zof casts Mage Hand, uh, and as they do so, what is the component for Mage Hand? Let's see. Uh, there is none. Okay. Um, their staff just glows a little bit, and this ha spectral hand appears, and Zof puts the letter of introduction in the hand and kind of floats it ahead of them a few feet uh, as they <laughs> approach the cave. Okay. All right, so as you enter the cave, the slow dripping of water sounds out where it falls from stalactites down into a murky pool that fills the rough tunnel ahead. Every few moments, a loud croaking sounds out, out from somewhere in the darkness beyond. Can I roll stealth check? Yes. All right. Oh, that's a 20. Dirty 20. Are you going to scout ahead for us? Yes. Um, so yeah, I'd like to scope it out a little bit, make sure there's no giant ice frogs giant ice lions giant ice or what was the other one ice giants ice giants i'm looking ice for giants. any of those things sorry. sorry i didn't think you guys would get to the cave tonight so i didn't i didn't uh remind you can go back to the house this. we can do some wacky stuff for the owner of that oh yeah we can do some crazy i prepared stuff. for this i prepared this far just in case but i didn't yeah. reread it to refresh my memory okay. so like Take when i time. prepared it it's, so no problem. No problem. <laughs> I prepared in the event that it would happen, yeah, yeah. but I didn't anticipate <laughs> you skipping the major. Anyway. So you know, okay, as a DM, this timing happens. is hard. Timing is hard. Yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. We probably won't get through the cave today, but we can definitely start it. Do you need a minute? Because um, I have something I want to do with Ethan. Do it. All right. So I think before he goes forward, he says, okay, so if I have something for you, ready? Oh, for me? Okay, on three. One, two, three, as many times as possible. Zulftal Zephyrx. Zulftal Zephyrx. Zulftal Zephyrx. Zulftal Zephyrx. Zulftal Zephyrx. Zulftal Zephyrx. As many times as possible? I'm sorry. I didn't keep... Uh, <laughs> I thought it was just three times in a row. Three. It's okay. We'll get it next time. Okay. That's how we're so... going to solve arguments, is who can, who can say it the <laughs> fastest. I love that. The most consecutive times. All right. So let's reset the... <laughs> Let's reset the scene. You all entered the cave. Are you all rolling stealth checks, or is it just Vonks? I think Vonks is um, scouting ahead for I us. I volunteer to yeah. scout ahead. Um, yeah. So. Okay, because there isn't really a much to scouting to be done. Basically, there's like five or ten feet into this cave. There's this giant pool of water that completely goes from one one side to the other in front of you and it's about how about 25 feet long Deep. okay long okay um so you can't really unless you can find some way to get across the water there's no 
really scouting ahead you can do. How deep is the water? Who has dark vision? I have dark vision. Sorry. Um, I have the light catcher. Okay. And so do cell file Zephrax. Do you use it? Um, I would tell you it's not necessary if I'm going ahead until we. I it's get back. pretty. I mean, the this area of the cave is dimly lit because it's close yeah. enough to the entrance. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Bonks can definitely see that on the opposite side of the pool, there is a uh, twenty foot. By 20 foot five, 25 foot long, heavy wooden beam lying against the west wall of the cave at the south end of the pool. Lying against it like it's supporting it or lying against it like it's just... Like it's being being used maybe to cross it, to cross the pool, but it's uh, on the opposite side of the pool. Right? How deep is the water? Well, it's murky, so it's very difficult to tell. Um, if... Zoff has dark vision. They could maybe grab that thing. They do not. Oh no. Zoff has dark vision. I have dark okay. Vision. Does, does, but if uh, you have a light source, cast? if you cast, if you use a cantrip to cast a light source, then you can also see that beam. Yeah. Do so I? It's just a matter of whether or not you cast. Yeah, part of scouting was to try also try and avoid the toads and whatnot. Is there any signs? Right. Of... So if you want to make a perception check, mm -hmm. yeah. you can do that. All right. Oh, that's a I natural think. 19. Oh, my gosh. Hang on a second. Right. We are Probably. going well. That is a 21. Yeah. So you can see. Oh, my gosh. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> um, why didn't I write this down? Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see that two <laughs> frog-shaped shadows mm -hmm. in the murky pool in front of you. How far in front of me? Can I hit them? What do you attack with? My great axe. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, well, they're in the middle of the pool, so they're probably about... Oh, I did open that up in a separate thing. They're probably about uh, 10 feet. That's my reach. Long away limp. from the edge of the water. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um slowly. Oh, but yeah. are they mean? Oh yeah, we're gonna. Can get I them. just talk to them? I mean, you this is see. this is why Ooh, people can you talk avoid to animals? them. Oh, guys, come on. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. This is where you say you can certainly try. You can. I was about to say <laughs> okay. that. So <laughs> I was. Uh, I'll negotiate with them with <laughs> what I'm good with. Uh, so I'll go back to the group and I'll kind of explain. You know that there's like uh, some way to cross, probably, but there's also toads, and I'm gonna go get them. So I'm, okay, gonna, well, I'm gonna smack them, and then you guys can help me, hopefully. Wait, wait, wait! Just let me let me no. tell them to move no. out of the way. No. Why? Because Why? these because obviously the village people <laughs> avoid this place because they're dangerous. We can get but a jump on them right now. Your average village person can't talk to toads. Guys, Look, I, I mean, get sneak attack. For personal curiosity, <laughs> I want to. I want to see someone talk to a toad. Dang it! Can we do this? No, oh, I can't. Let's jump on these things. <laughs> Here, <laughs> like, how about this? How about this? Up. You it's hide. It's been like you... a whole episode with no fighting. All right, fighting. all right. I will stay hidden. I will stay yeah, hidden. Yeah, you hide off to the and side. Then if, and then if, if yeah, Angelica right, can try talking fine. to the toads. Okay. And if it fails, we'll blast them. Okay. So yeah, we'll do that, and I'm gonna hold an action to attack while hidden, I guess. Make a stealth like a... check. Well, I already had a stealth check. Do you want me to re-roll it? You can use that. What was it? It was a 20. Oh, yeah. You should re- No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> roll lower. Okay, roll okay. lower. No, I don't. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not going to roll higher. That's for dang sure. <laughs> so, like... All right. Cool. That's fine. Right. Angelica, you're so... up. And I'll, I'll back you up if, if things turn bad. How about that? Is that just... Uh... It's a charisma check, I believe. Verbal to, to influence them, but I haven't what? pulled up the spell. Does Angelica have dark vision? No. Okay, it's just me then. Are you All casting right. a spell or are you just using your? It's uh, just a bonus action. Speech of beast and leaf. Yeah. That's one I didn't get to. Oh, you have advantage on all charisma checks you make to influence them. Mm -hmm. I cool. see. Cool. 
So do you want me to roll? Well, Chris why Matt, don't you start Matt, with I... start with by telling us what you say to convince them? Okay, so um, and what do you what do you want them to do? Uh, hello, little toads and frogs. That's me, Angelica. Come from far away place. Uh, we're uh, we're only here to visit. We don't want to hurt you. So just wondering if you guys could just. Move aside, or or maybe even help us get across. There's a bad bad plague okay. going around. Don't know if it if it uh, happens to creatures too. So you know. Another flawless accent, by the way. Would you mind? Oh. <laughs> um. So you're asking them to either move aside or help us. Okay. Uh. Well, go ahead and make your persuasion check at advantage. Charisma, not not persuasion. Charisma, charisma? Per- oh. persuasion is a charisma based check. Oh, okay. Did you say an advantage? Yes. I needed that too. Okay. That is a fourteen. Okay. Where am I? There it is. Nope, that's not it. By the way, guys, I've just discovered as I peruse my character sheet that I do have dark vision. Uh huh. Who knew? <laughs> Not me. Um, it was the 14. Yep. Yeah, that's not enough. So you can hear them going, <laughs> Ribbit, and I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Can I oh, get my attack off then? Dang. Why don't you roll uh, uh, an insight check? I mean, if they're like going to jump out at Angelica, right? Yeah, I mean, you can have your held action trigger at the start of combat, but let's all roll initiative first. That's cool. Cool. And I mean, since you're supposed, I mean, you're probably hidden from them, right? So you'll probably get advantage. So yeah, it was. It was, uh, I think, the more important thing. Yes. He's hidden, but it's not a surprise round because the frogs know that you guys are there, but it'll be at advantage. Great. Yeah. You ready Thank for the initiative? Okay, so, for that so just because this is a new feature for me, and I, mm-hmm. I, before we start initiative, I just want to ask I have a bonus action called Hidden Step, but it says turn invisible until the start of my next turn. When do I? say I want to use hidden step. So it it's action? a bonus action and you can be invisible for that your current yeah. turn when you use bonus action and then the entire round until mm-hmm. your next turn. Sweet. And then the start of okay. your next turn you're visible again. That makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. I keep thinking a bonus action you have to use at the end for some reason. Though I don't know why. You can use them in any Because it's like another bonus mm-hmm. action, I guess. I also, don't know. Melissa, remember you can cast guidance on yourself before you do checks like the charisma yeah. thing you did. So oh, okay. it'll take some muscle memory, but it's pretty good to do that if you know you're going to be doing something. All right, I'm making note. Guidance before everything. <laughs> guidance before <laughs> checks. We've been yep. doing a lot of them, too. Yeah. No, you've been doing great yeah. for a brand new character. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, All right, you ready for the initiatives? Just a second. Sure. Initiative is a dex based check, right? Yep. yep. Okay. So monsters always just have their dexterity. Yep. Let me get my I just wanted to make sure Chrono Trigger right. Frog Boss music going now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Froggy went to court and then he did right on, huh? Easter? Seven. Continuing my tradition from that. Either. Nope. Six. <laughs> okay. Uh, who's next? Bonks? Fourteen. Okay. And Angelica. Sixteen. Okay. Do you want to go first? Go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to write this down here so it's easier to see. I mean, you might not go first. They might go first. 
Well, I get to go first, I think. Okay. Yeah, uh, so that held action triggers at right. the start of combat. So go ahead and roll at advantage. Perfect. All right. Needed it because I got a one on one of them. <laughs> oh my god. But that is a 19 to hit. Uh, yep. That hits. Okay. And I'm going to use my bugbear feature called surprise attack. What was that? Is that me? That was you? Okay. Oh. Oh no. That's the, <laughs> that the bugbear alarm. Um, okay. So I get an extra 2d6 to this attack. Cool. That is 18, 19. Almost like my sneak attack. I know. Surprise <laughs> attack. That is 22 damage. Okay, well, you basically just, like... Bonk one of them. What are you using to great attack axe. it? A great axe? So mm -hmm. you swing your great axe down with a ferocious roar. Yeah. And you just... Cleave through cleave it. Cleave this yeah. poor ice frog oh. in two. One down, one to go. Yeah. Well, oh, that's you... what you get for not listening to me. No, you got your chance. <laughs> I'm backing you up. You should be thankful. Not you. I'm talking to the oh, frog. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, you want to reconsider your options, Mr. Poor... Frog? Poor froggy. <laughs> okay. Um, Angelica, you're up next. Oh, I don't want to, but I'll do my... Um... Okay, I'm going to do hidden step. And you said they're like 10 feet away. So they don't. They are no. 10 feet away. Well, the one is 10 feet away. Okay. So, and. Also, um, they were hiding. But I guess, yeah, they're kind of coming to the surface. So you can see it. Never mind. Keep going. All right. So hidden step. They can't see me. And mind will... you, mind you that if you make an attack. If you attack, make a damage roll, or force someone to make a saving throw, your invisibility ends. So you have to do the, your attack stuff first, and then do hidden step, basically. Yeah. Unless you want to use it to get advantage on your attack. Oh, that's true. That's great. Yeah, there you so go. you could do hidden step, move, and then attack, and you would get like the surprise advantage. That's what I was intending. OK. Nice. OK, so I rolled the 17. To hit? Yeah. Wait, what are you attacking with? Because they're 10 feet away. Do you have 10 foot re reach? Are you using a ranged attack? Uh, okay, see, this is what I'm confused about. I was using the hidden step so I could get real close. You'd so have to go my... into the water. You could do that, but you are standing at the edge of this pool of water. You okay. don't know how deep it is, and they are... Ten feet All right, away. so you can get in the water if you want. Um. All right, I'll hold my action then until I get close. Um, just because I'm proficient at a javelin doesn't mean I have one, so <laughs> I'll have to hold my action. Are you gonna stay there on the edge of the water? Or are you gonna back up a little bit? Um. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go back by bonks. Well, I'm at the edge of the water too, but yeah, Bonks is also where. Where are Zoph and Easter? I I think I'm at the mouth of the cave because um, none of us have cast light, and I can't see into there yet. Okay. Yeah, uh, Zoph would have hung back with Easter a little bit. I mean, okay. So you guys are like ten feet back from the edge of this. Yeah. Pool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna go back with them? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, is that it for your turn? Yep. And it's Bonks' turn. All right. Well, I'm going to make another attack against this frog. Um, I'm not going to take advantage, but that is a 19 on the die. So okay, that hits. Uh, I will do my regular attack. 13 damage. Axe. Yep. How much damage? 13. 13. Okay. Yep. So another whoop, 
with the great axe. Okay. It's and then still, I'm going to back it's up to the rest. Standing. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. But cool. I'll stay in the front. So I'll go, I'll be in the front of everybody, um, but I'll back okay. up to where. And I'll tell uh, Easter, because Easter doesn't have dark vision. Back. One more's coming. One of these ice toad, ice, big ices, toad, you know, ice, ice Easter, giants. Easter kind of squints. Ice. Um, and I'll be like, it's right enough, over there. Is there a dim enough light for me to see it? Um, make a perception check. Okay. By the way, Bonks, that was totally cool what you did back there. Thank you. I'm well, quite good at one. this. Nah, you can't see it. Okay. Sorry. Uh, another um, one? Easter is going to fire blindly. So I'm gonna well, it's not your turn yet, Easter. Hold the phone. Oh. <laughs> it's not your turn. It was uh, oh, Bonks' oh, oh, turn. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I, I backed know. up and then I told you that one's, one's yeah. coming, basically. And then it's the frog's turn. And I think that uh, Zof and Bonks, mm -hmm. you have dark vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Angelica, do you have dark vision? No. No. Okay. So just the two of yeah. you with dark vision can see the frog turn around and swim in the opposite direction <laughs> and okay. disappear under the water. All right. That's fine. They learned Easter their lesson at nothing because she didn't see this and doesn't know that. Yeah, and then I'll try like it's gone now. It, it swam away. Oh. Well. Bonks gets the first trophy. I'll take that. <laughs> it's Easter's turn. Uh, I just told you what Easter does on her turn. She fires at nothing. She um, re reaches. She holds out um, her crystal and and like fires, uh, like makes a motion with her other hand and fires um, an eldritch blast at where she thought Fox pointed into the water, into where the toad was. Okay. But the the toad isn't there anymore, so nothing happens. So and, e and Easter says, "Did I get it? No, I swam <laughs> away. But that oh. was a good shot. That's that's about where it was." Zof turns to the group and says, we need to kill this thing to get across? Um, I presume so, Zof yeah. we'll walk in and, and take a look at the pool, see if anything's visible in there. Make your perception check. No, that's a good dice roll. Um, perception. Uh, 17. Okay. How far is your dark vision? Ooh, good question. Um... 60 feet. Okay, so you don't see any frogs. Well, you see like the one frog that's kind of swam away and has gotten out of the water and is running. Okay, but so it's sort of down the tunnel a bit? It's down the tunnel on the opposite side, but as you're watching it run away, you can see uh, two, nope. Yes. You can see an elf and two dwarves running in your direction. Oh, With okay. hostile intentions or just... Yeah, they look pretty angry. Oh, okay. um, just killed their frog. Is the, <laughs> is the frog within 30 feet? Of you? Yeah. Let's see. Being the only one with access to a map and trying to do math in my head. It's the life of a DM, am I right? Okay. You are right. Uh, no, the frog is long gone. Okay. Movement and dash, yeah, he's he's out of here. How close right. are the humanoid? They are just at the edge of soft star vision. No, they're coming up to the edge of the pool, so they're like twenty five feet ish. Oh. Okay, uh, Zof will kind of wave their free hand. Uh, or Claw, rather, and say, hey, would one of you happen to be Tolgi's sister? <laughs> uh, if so, we've got a letter from her. It just kind of has the mage hand wave it a little bit. OK. Uh, make a persuasion check. All right, I'm going to use another feature I just realized I have, which is forceful presence. 
Uh, but in Zof's case, it's more like pleasant presence. Uh, when you make a charisma, intimidation, or persuasion check, you can do so with advantage. Once you use the straight, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. Great. So I'll take advantage. Oh, it's not great. Seven. Great. Uh, yeah, it looks like they are too angry to uh, talk. And they're just shouting, hi, what are you doing here? Get out of our cave. I'm going to go back there a little ways. Go back to my friends. <laughs> Angry people. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how Zofa right. alerts us? Yep. Well, I mean, I can see too, but yeah. <laughs> Angry, Angry people. people. We're not All angry, right. Zofa. <laughs> it can be worse. It can why, be are you calling, why are you calling us angry people? <laughs> and, uh, all right. So the elf runs up to the edge of the water and he pulls out a light crossbow and he fires a shot at Zof because Zof is, Zof, I'm sorry, because Zof is the one that, that, uh, that he saw. Yeah, now I have to roll. And it's not very good. Yeah, that's only a nine to hit. <laughs> oh, Zof kind of like ducks under it. <laughs> and one of the two dwarves uh, also takes out a crossbow and fires at Zof. Please don't. Even worse. Oh my god. You're lucky that I'm the DM because I don't roll very well ever. Uh, yeah, that's a six to hit. <laughs> yep, Zof... Uh... Ducks under another one. So these they two crossbow bolts go ding, ding, um, on the walls of the cave. Okay. And the second dwarf is looking like uh, she's grabbing the wooden beam <laughs> and she's bringing it over to the to put it down across the. Oh, hey, guys, they're the uh, putting down a method for us to get across. That's great. <laughs> oh, yes. It is Angelica's turn. And she is. Okay. Invisible. No, I think she's visible, right? She's holding out. Oh, action. she's visible now. Yeah, she was invisible. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, did you Did you actually do that, though? I thought you were just holding uh, an action. No, instead. because I, I couldn't do anything, so I yeah. just held my action. Yeah. But then the frog so, ran away, so it never went off. Yeah. yeah. But you still were invisible? No. No. Oh, you didn't do a hidden step either. Okay. I, no, I didn't, because it wouldn't do any good. But now okay. you can. But now I can. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> you still so, don't have. Well, I guess yeah. The beam is being placed there, so you have a way to get across. The... Yeah, there it is. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to attacks. cast a hidden step on myself. Okay. And uh, if they're coming toward. Me can will we meet and will my scimitar work? So they haven't started crossing yet. The pool is twenty five feet across and they're still on the other side. Um, and you have about ten feet, so they're about thirty five feet away from you right now. Okay, so I'm gonna make my way and get probably get about halfway across. Okay. That's what I'll do. Are you okay. are you casting your invisibility or she, you... she used hidden step, yeah. Yeah. You did, okay. Yeah. Okay, then it is Bonks' turn. Okay. Uh if they're I mean I can reach them. Um so I mean, do we wanna fight them? Can you reach so. them? Yeah, I, I, yeah I, they I tried move. to attack. Yeah, I guess so. Oh. They they shot at Zof, so I mean they're not good. I'm I'm really angry. Now I'm the angry person as I fly into my first rage. <laughs> Like, how dare you shoot at Zophtal Zephyrax? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'll find a rage, and then I will use my movement to get up to within 10 feet of them, and then swing at the elf. Okay. That is a 15 plus something, 5, so 20 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Okay. That is, ooh, nice. Uh, 14 damage. Oh my god. Oh, Eight plus, drops. plus, oh, okay, never mind. I forgot to add <laughs> the rage the rage damage. The rage bonus. Yeah. No. So, great axe. He just Boomp. drops. Again. Like, yeah. like a rock to the you floor. You hit him with, like, the flat of the axe or with the, with the slicey part? Oh, the slicey part. Oh, no. 
<laughs> no? Maybe not? Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm not even convinced. He killed him. I'm just saying, oh no. He killed him. Okay. So the elf kind they of trying to kill like, us. falls down into the into the pool, covered in blood. And the other dwarf with the crossbow is kind of shouting at you. What's he shouting? Just random. He's shouting in words. dwarfish. Swear words, swear uh, words in dwarfish. I don't really speak that language. But I don't <laughs> care. I'm too angry. All right. That's okay. fine. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, Easter, you're up. All right. I still have no idea what's really going on. So I'm finally <laughs> going to cast light. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can see uh, two dwarves sight. at the end of the at the other edge of the pool, and a yeah. beam has been placed across the pool for access. Um, and I guess I'll start walking across the beam with my hand up, saying, "Hey, whoa, 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 whoa!" Okay. And you bump into Angelica, who <laughs> yes. is invisible. Who well, I had no idea was there. Yeah. Hey, watch out! Don't step on my feet. Zof? Uh, remind me what sort of individual was, um, what was her name? I can't even remember. Togi. Togi? Togi was a dwarf. <laughs> Togi was a dwarf. And this other dwarf that's across the bridge seems to be, um, I mean, male, female, in between. There's one male and one female. There's two dwarves? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's why um, you had the elf. Gotcha. Thank goodness. <laughs> so I was like, why, have, why not the elf? Like, what? Zof, no we'll walk up the to elf. the bridge and try one more time. Because <laughs> Zof really doesn't want to kill these people if they're the people we're here to meet. Um, I still think this is a misunderstanding. Like I said, I've got a letter from Tolgi. We're supposed to come out here to meet with some people. Please don't kill us. <laughs> Make a persuasion check at disadvantage. Yep. Oh, wow. I rolled a 14 and an 18. So I'll take the 14. Plus zero? Plus zero. Yeah, I'm sorry, we but they are very angry. Friend, you so. just killed their elf friend. The DC had to go up because of that. So they're just yeah. like, you lie. You killed our friend. You lie. Shot at us. They wouldn't listen. Intruders, get out of here. All right, okay. I can I can uh, bonk him instead next time of slicing him. Ducks around the wall of the cave to get out of sight. Okay, and it's the bandit's turn. So they're both pretty angry with bonks right now. So they're both gonna take out scimitars and go after. Oh, does that mean bonks. that our scimitar goes after them? What? My held Didn't action. Did you have a held action? Mm-hmm. Oh, the trigger was. What for them to come into? Well, Did you have the held action again? That was from before. That was the first one. Oh, I no, didn't you didn't. That was the first one. That's what I thought. Okay. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. I was like, we didn't talk about that. All right. You just no. said you were making your way across. I sure. should have, though, but I, I didn't. I thought you did, but I might have been mistaken <laughs> then. Yeah, so they're going to attack. Mm, okay. Oh, my God. Well, there's a natural one. <laughs> Barely what is with the session? I know. Hey, that's actually decent. That is a 19 to hit. That hits. Okay. I finally get to do some damage to you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Five slashing damage. Okay, half down to two. Like you get out of here, intruder! You don't kill our friend. Eye for an eye. Yeah. And oh, for an elf. I forgot. We don't have one, so that's not a fair bargain. <laughs> okay, and then it elf? is Angelica's turn. Okay, so they're in front of me now. You're, you're visible now. You're visible now, and they're. I mean. Bonks, did you get all the way across no, on your turn? Because I have ten foot reach, so I thought and You were standing was on there. the beam. Yeah, but I could I guess I could have moved back a little bit. I don't know how that would work. Well, I'm trying turn. to picture in my head the like order how of people wide, on the how beam. How wide is the beam? Is it like five feet? I mean it's like five feet across, five so you'd have okay. to kind of 
kind of so it's I would a balancing have had to act. Shimmy, but yeah. I mean, I'm I'm as close as I would have had to been, right? So whatever that means. Yeah. So behind Angelica, maybe. Sure. I don't know. Well, right. Angelica's halfway. You would have had to be maybe one square in front of her. Easter's one square behind her. Yeah. And the bandits. Oh, conga line going up. on on this. Yeah, really. <laughs> the bandits had to come up and. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So okay. one of those scimitars would have been a crossbow, but we'll say the scimitars only hit you. The crossbow missed. Sure. Because one dwarf is still on the on the beach and one is on the bar, so there's one on the other side of the box. There's a bandit on the other side of box. Okay. Okay. Bonk's stuck down. I'm gonna jump across and and uh, we <laughs> come back. What are you doing, Angelica? There she is. And? There she is. Oh. There. 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 Okay. There. Yes. Okay. The suspense. All the while saying, I, we really don't want to fight you guys, but <laughs> but I cut my scimitar out. Are you ready to talk yet? Are you attacking or are you trying to persuade them? Or I'm going to try to persuade first before I attack. I think intimidation. Sounds more like intimidation to me. Okay. And that is a 17. Hey, there we go. Okay, so they see you pretty much popping out of nowhere because <laughs> you were invisible <laughs> with the scimitar <laughs> and shouting at them. And I'm and very tall. Yeah, also we're both like very tall. Bonks the bugbear. <laughs> this fear bulk, very t- two very tall towering, towering creatures. <laughs> Uh, with sharp objects, and they both kind of back da- back up off of the the beam with their hands up, and they drop their weapons, and they say, "Fine, fine, we can talk. Fine." You can do that with people, but not with frogs. <laughs> what kind of nature lover are you? <laughs> sure, you're not like. Some... If she tried to intimidate the frogs, it would have gone better. Oh, I think you're right. <laughs> Supposed to be this like touchy feely kind of gal. Yeah. Okay, who fights? All right. So, so they I'll... back up and they let you kind of come across on the beam. Yeah, and I'll I'll put away my weapon at that point. Cool down a little bit. Get out of my rage. I'll motion over for Zof who has the, the letter. Yeah, Zof comes trailing across, looking very nervous. Tail between the legs, letter floating out in front. They kind uh, of look kind of scared. So is one of you the person we're looking for? Who are you looking for? Like I said, um, I've got a letter. What are you doing here? A letter from Tolgi uh, in Pale Bank Village. And you see the, the female dwarf kind of elbows the male dwarf. And says, Isn't that the name of Julio's sister? And the male says, oh, I, I think you're right. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. We want her. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? We did Why'd say you kill so. our friend? <laughs> we said so before your friend was killed. Before you shot at yeah, us. Yeah, you shot first. That's right. You killed our frog. Oh, it was your frog. Well, they they, attacked, they also either. attacked us first. Both of these self-defense. Well, you did come into our cave without asking, you know? Really, their cave? Where's your permit? Where's your... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't say that. You from the government? <laughs> well, where's your li- aptly... Where's your badge? Detective it's an named Cave Croker. Because yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> well, if it's Lulil you came here to see, we can take her to take you to her. Lulil. 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 H U L I L. Gotcha. It's a really hard name to say, and I'm doing my best. <laughs> I know. It sounds like Julio. Like... Julio. <laughs> Try saying that in a Scottish accent that you just learned today. Mm. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's who we're here to see. We've got a letter. See? All right. Right this way, then. And... 
they take you through the entire cave. Right. Sorry about your elf friend. Hey, he was an old bastard anyway. He didn't like him much. <laughs> okay, well, it just looks like I did him a favor then. Zoom just kind of raises an eyebrow and says, well, I guess it's all right then. <laughs> Yes, there are worse ways to go. <laughs> so they take you. Uh, do, we, do we want to call it there? Give me just. Okay. I have a good place. Okay. okay. We're almost there. So we'll take you through, uh, through the cave, and there's. Oh, as you go, you can see more? there's a pool where some more frogs are, and there's like Wait. a bucket full of like. What was it? Dead bats. You know, you're really annoying, you know. So. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so there's a bucket full of dead bass, and you can see uh, one of the frogs is kind of trying to sneak one out of it. And oh the dwarf says, Frosty, what are you doing? <laughs> Those are for training. And so the male dwarf goes off and is tending to the, to the frogs, but the female That's dwarf great. kind of rolls her eyes and takes you, continues to take you through the cave. You pass through a cavern that has a bunch of um, bed rolls arranged in a circle around a fire pit. Um, and there's like chicken bones, and empty wine and spirits bottles and other food waste just littering the floor here. Um, but you keep looks going like, through that. Looks like you guys could use a housekeeper here. <laughs> What's the use? We're not gonna stay here very long, very much longer. We're all heading back to Shady Creek Run soon. Thought it might be nice to live in a tidy place, that's all. It's a cave. But it could be a tidy cave. It could be a cozy cave. <laughs> <laughs> and she takes you to the edge of the another pool. And uh, she whistles. Yeah, and this okay. giant... Uh ice frog, like even bigger than the other ones you saw, slowly comes to the surface. What's Zof's reaction? To the ice frog? To the giant ice frog? <laughs> Is it... I mean... <laughs> Nothing in particular. Just okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you'd be like, that's another way to die, or something. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and it kind of blinks slowly at the dwarf uh, that's with you, and she kind of pulls a dead bat out of her pocket and hands it to this giant frog, and she goes, I get on your old crow go, we need to go across. And it goes, and it turns around, and she kind of climbs on its back and motions for you guys to get on. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do in the first place. <laughs> this one's okay. much, much, Note much to self. Carry dead bats. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so old croaker just just is the cave across. named for the frog, or is the frog named for the cave? Are you asking her this? Yes. Uh, I I didn't ken what the cave is named after, but we named the frog. Gotcha. So it, it's like if I lived in Palebank Village and named my dog Palebank. Well, I think the cave was named after the frogs, too, you know. Haven't you heard the croaking the whole time you've been here? That's true. This is very cyclical. <laughs> <laughs> and the frog just <laughs> takes you slowly across this pool. And uh, the door pops up on the other end, and she says, Julio's cabin's right through here. Yeah, and you guys join her, and you go through this narrow kind of passage to this last opening in the cave. And you feel this warm rush of heat coming. And you look in, there's this massive fire burning in the center of the cavern. And the smoke is venting up through the narrow stone chimney. And you think, ah, that must be what we saw from the outside. Mm -hmm. The flames are illuminating a rough painting of a five-headed dragon that not dominates the north wall. There's a bedroll spread out beneath the mural. Near the crackling Blaze, a dwarf bundled in a heavy cloak, sits on a stone chest beside an elf whose face is covered in dragon tattoos. The dwarf's, dwarf's face 
is streaked with pulsing blue veins. Yeah. And that's where we'll end it. All right. Just yeah. like the end, I'm writing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we'll call it. Ethan does that to me all the time. <laughs> So we'll pick oh. up there next week. You guys kind of sped through what I thought would take two sessions <laughs> in one. <laughs> there was an entire dungeon plan that you skipped basically all of. So that's fun. Nice. <laughs> and there was an encounter planned in town that you got to skip too. So this is like the opposite of what we do to Ethan. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we wrote so poorly in our investigation. <laughs> that's true. Like you did have you did miss some stuff that might have been important but don't worry you'll get the information you need somehow probably maybe i'm sure we'll get to the place in the future where all we do is delay k's plans but <laughs> well it'll be easier to run when it's my own yeah and not something pre-written that i have to like <laughs> make sure i get it right yeah yeah but now it's like all right i uh I'm glad we're stopping here because I need to plan the characterization of these two great characters. <laughs> that was a it's lot like, of fun. It's was like fun. now I need two weeks to plan. Who else has got something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got it. I just Skip didn't think we'd be here night, this so. week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks everyone for joining us um, and watching. We'll be back and we will continue this uh adventure at least until we get to the end of this written adventure and then we'll go back to our main campaign so um i hope you enjoyed it i certainly did um yeah, same. yeah. and uh yeah so good night yeah good night good night